all right guys and welcome back to ask nk so today we are starting up a series of tutorials that is going to span for let's say maybe a couple of three or four videos right and so what this is is we're going to go through certain basic stuff you should know and we're doing these uh to actually create some sense of workflow and we're going to start off with creating a candle will go ahead to texture this candle do maybe a retopology or simply use a simple z remesh for the topology and i will start off by this by default this is not your typical z brush right so i'm going to go ahead and press ctrl n to clear this out so if i clear this out and you notice that this is not how your ui is i'm going to start off with a simple um cylinder so if you're new to zbrush you will find out that uh, you're going to have a lot of problems trying to sculpt with this because at this point nothing is happening, right? So why this is not sculpting is because it's not a polymesh 3D. The only thing you can do with this right now is within the initialize, you can just, you know, play with this basic stuff. So we're going to go ahead and make this a polymesh 3D. And so not to confuse you, I will go ahead and change my entire UI, how it looks, so you can follow along. So if I go over to preference, come over to where I have um, config, is that it? Yes. And say restore standard UI. This is how your default UI should look like. And I guess you should be comfortable with that right now. So the next thing which we would like to do is already we have this mesh. There is basically two ways you can do this, right? So one of the first ways you can actually play with this is you can go ahead. Let me just scribble here. You can go ahead and use a Dyna mesh. And, you know, once you're done with the Dyna mesh, you can simply work with the Dyna mesh, do every single thing which you want. And then you can Z remesh, right? Or you can now in ZBrush, so if you have a recent version of ZBrush, you can now use something called the Sculptris Pro and then go back to this, right? Depending on what you want to do, right? So I'm going to go over this. So just in case you're new to ZBrush, you can see how this works. And this, then maybe touch about this and this. So it's going to be easy for you to understand when to use this and when to use this right and what is the big difference is hopefully you get the idea so i'm just going to go ahead and push this by the side and then we can start off so basically basically we would start off by simply simply guys right simply going over to geometry and within the geometry you see we have something called dynamesh i'm going to leave the resolution as it is because we're not making something overly complicated and if you want to make things in ZBrush, guys, except you have a very good visual memory or good visual library in your brain, references are extremely important. This is the references which I'm going to work with. So you can see how those references uh, work. And I'm going to go ahead and make a stylized thing out of this, all right? So we would start off by simply, let me go ahead and simply select the setting region and i want to stretch this all the way down all right so i want this candle to be about this long okay so it's about this long and the next thing which i'm going to do because if you turn on your wireframe you notice that we don't have enough geometry and just to explain that for the guys new to zbrush simply means that once you're sculpting you see we're out of uh, what we need and that's not good enough so what we're going to do is come through and hit dynamesh so with dynamesh turned on now if i turn this wireframe on you see we have way more geometries to work with right so i would go in and turn on something called symmetry so symmetry allows you that whenever you're modeling from one point you get to model across the entire surface so you don't get to model here and then model here so as you're modeling as you're doing whatever you're doing here zbrush is automatically doing whatever it you, you want it to do on the other side so next thing i'll bring out the brush click here you can get your brush or you can press b on your keyboard and you can get your brush and your brushes are sampled based on the letters so now i want to use a clay builder brush right so if i press b and we have the word clay you see it goes to c what does build up starts what does build up start with it starts with a b oh my god where's the b where's the b where's the b all right so this is a b so you can say uh brush clay build up simple right <clears throat> the same thing goes for brushes like dam standard so you can say brush 
them standard right if you want to get brushes like your standard brush brush s and t for standard right same just go and you know so on and so forth right if you want to get for move topology brush m for move t for topology so you can see that it's pretty easy to actually work with these things right i've just showed you guys the brushes which you're going to use just in case so i'm going to go ahead and use a clay builder brush bcb all right so let's actually clay build this so i'm going to just scribble around nothing too fancy so i'll bring this down and within this part this is where it's burning so we're going to actually just make it burn a bit down there okay so and this is where it's leaking from a little bit leak a little leak from here would be nice and you know as it's leaking from here it simply means uh it simply means that you know the leak needs to go all the way down but we don't want it to look like a reverent uh thingy so we would just need to cover around this part so let me just simply do this around this part and there we are having it good all right now you will notice as i'm scribbling around this i'm having this block form and this is being controlled by the alpha here so if i click here and switch i can change the alphas that exist so i'm going to go over to this alpha and now you see i have a much more smoother alpha happening right uh, just to share with you guys so next thing which I'm going to do is just go ahead and smooth this, scribble around just to get this thing looking clean. So our candles are basically clean and rough at the same time, right? So I'm going to explain what I mean by that. So just up until this point, we have this candle looking like this. Now it's very symmetrical, but I would like to break symmetry as quick as possible, right? So I can use the V key to move this thing. So I'm just going to move just a little bit and move just a little bit. Now, I said I wanted to break symmetry, so I'm turning X off, so I can move this just about this part, this point, right? So just about this point, I'm breaking the symmetry, right? So you can use your move tool to actually move things across. So let's look at it from a different point. It's always good to look at your models, man. Always look at your models. All right, so we can have something like that something like this is also cool and uh, let's turn this down and maybe we turn this up sorry so we can have something like this so we have dynamesh you've seen how you can easily leverage from the dynamesh and go ahead and start making stuff for yourself right so we have this thing in our dynamesh and we can use it to actually create things the next thing which we would want to do by default is to go ahead and add some wax dripping all right so to add the wax dripping i don't need to go back to that part press b c b so i'm just jumping back and forth between this and you notice now i turned up symmetry so if you press x you can turn up symmetry right if you don't have a keyboard all right if you don't have a keyboard you can always turn on symmetry if you go over to i guess transform activate symmetry and there you have it so i'm just going to go ahead and scribble around here just to add this now you see the reason why i dropped this earlier right why i changed this to this right so we can simply come through and add something like this and you know we can make some from these parts from these parts fall down a little bit more so i'm just going to increase this within this part allow them to fall just a little bit more all right Maybe from here, they were actually dripping. Actually, they're supposed to have a hole here. So they were actually dripping from this part, right? All right. So this is to give an idea of how this looks. It might not be the best candle you've seen in the world, but it's, it's more of an idea, right, of how this works. So now that we have this going for us, the next thing which we would want to do is to go ahead and create a zero mesh version of this. All right. So I want to go ahead and make a zero mesh version of this. Now, the reason why you're making a zero mesh is because about this point, we have a high resolution, right? So for me to make a zero mesh, I always like to make a copy. 
So if you hold down Shift Control and D, you can make a copy or you can come here and hit duplicate and make a copy, right? So I'm just going to close the eye of the first one, which is going to be the very first one. So this one has the DynaMesh. This second one doesn't have the DynaMesh. So I'm just going to still uh, select this, go all the way down to Geometry and turn DynaMesh off, right? And we don't want to have anything to do that with Dy DynaMesh anymore, right? So I'm just going to have this here and turn this off, turn this on. Simple as that. Back to Geometry directly around the DynaMesh, you are going to see around this DynaMesh, you're going to see that we'll have a good neighbor uh, called ZeroMesh. So for this ZeroMesh, I'm going to leave it as adaptive. You can set the count to whatever you want, and then you're going to hit ZeroMesh. So with ZeroMesh happening, you would notice that this would go ahead and zero mesh this entire thing, keeping the form exactly as it is supposed to be. All right. So it's going to go ahead and keep the form exactly as it is supposed to be. And once this is done, we're going to have a copy that looks exactly like that. All right. So you can see for yourself, I'm just going to go back so you can see for yourself, we have this and we'll have a copy that looks exactly identical to it. All right. So we have a copy that looks identical to this. And that's about it for what we want to make. Cool. So now I I have what I want. So this is uh, what we want. You would notice that directly here now, I can easily control this. So if I go over and bring out the move brush, I can now easily move this slowly, but surely, right? I can now easily move this around and change how I want it to look. All right? So this is how you get uh, this thing working out for you. Next thing which I would like to do is to create the rope and the rope is going to be really, really quick and easy. All right. So to create this rope, I'm going to scroll all the way. All right. All the way up to this part. And you're going to notice I have something called append. So I'm clicking on append, not insert, but append. Then I'm going to add up. So I'm saying append me a cylinder. So we have a cylinder here and with this cylinder, I'm going to scale this to down. I'm scaling this down as well. I'm going to stretch this, scale it down a little bit, stretch it. Uh, let's scale this down and stretch this as well. Okay. So we want this to touch second base just a little bit and let's turn this down and touch this base. I think we should turn it down a bit. All right. So for something that is this simple, if we go ahead and turn up the uh, wireframe, you can see we have something that we can work with, right? So for this one, I'm going to just turn this down. And instead of sculpting around, I would like to just use the move brush to position this how I would like it to be. Okay, so I'm just positioning this here and there. And I can use uh, hold down shift to smooth. So I can use the shift key to smooth this as I would like it to look, All right? So I can do that here. Let's turn off the poly wire and something like that. Now, if you want to uh, also go ahead and start moving things around, of course you can start moving things around just to give some movement happening there. All right, so this is the candle and this is what we have. Next up is the flame. Now I'm going to show you guys with a different approach on how you can make that flame, right? And so how we're going to make that is going to be relatively, relatively simple. So what I'm going to do now, since we're making a very stylized uh, sort of flame and candle is to go ahead and also append something else. So for this, I'm going to come here and append. Um, let me think first guys. Okay. So I'm going to append a 3D uh, plane. So this 3D plane, as simple as it is, I will stretch this out and scale this. You may probably not be able to see it, right? You may not be able to see it in yours. I'll tell you why. The reason why is down here where we have the display, your display is not set to double. So if your display is not set to double, you would not be able to see it. Okay. So you can choose to do this in different forms. 
You can choose to use an alpha to uh, do whatever you want and choose to load up an alpha. Come over here where you have alpha and convert that alpha to mesh, which is going to make it 3D. But what I'm going to do is a much more traditional approach, right? Because I know it's going to be very beneficial for a lot of people. So now we have these objects here. I'm going to subdivide this, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and subdivide this. You can subdivide this by hitting Ctrl D, but my recording program wouldn't allow me to do that. So I'm coming here to hit divide, right? So what we can do now is now I've divided this by four, which is actually a lot. Actually, let me divide it one more time, which is actually a lot. I will go ahead and just simply delete the subdivision. Right now I have very dense objects, all right? Now, if you don't have an idea of what's going on, I think I've explained this before and I'm going to try this so that you guys can uh, have an idea. This is your default plane. Once you make a division, this happens. If you make multiple divisions, this happens, right? So that's what is happening to our object right now. So with this turned on, I have divided this a couple of times and you can see what's happening there. So I think this is a bit too much. So I could just step back to maybe say three. So I can drop this by three and simply divide this like that. All right. So now I've divided this. I would come through and hold down control, which we use in making our mask. But now instead of making a mask like this, I would like to make a mask using a lasso. All right. So the lasso tool is what I'm going to use to make my fire looking sort of mask. So I'm just going to go ahead and do something like that. All right, so that other one didn't hold up, so I'm holding Control and Alt, and I'm going to invert this mask like this. All right, so I'm just also going to do this to invert this mask like this. All right, so actually, I think I should go a little bit lower than what I had. All right, so I have inverted this mask to what I want, and now with this mask inverted, the next thing which I would like to do is to extract this mask out of this object. Okay, so to do that, you can choose to extract this mask out of the object or you can choose to, you know, uh, convert this to something totally different and work with it, right? Like a polygroup and all that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to the sub tools where the tools leave. So it's called sub tools. And if you can't find this, it's because you're not using 28, uh, 2019. So this is a new feature in 2019 where you can increase your sub tools and reduce your sub tools count, right? So I'm just keeping it by six and I'm going to go ahead and hit extract. Now with extract on, you see what I have here. I'm going to simply accept this and have just this object now. Very basic and, and simple. I'm turning this off because I don't want to see that now. And for these other parts that I have, this part I have, I would invert this by simply holding down uh, uh, what's it called? Holding out control and clicking. I'm inverting this. All right. So I'll invert this and then go ahead. All right. Go ahead and start manipulating these other parts of the geometry. So for us to do this, let's actually solo this all the way out. Instead of using the move brush, I would press B and press I, which will switch to inflate. Then I can choose to use the inflate brush. So with the inflate brush there, uh, sorry about the noise in the background. With the inflate noise there, I would go ahead and start sculpting directly this. Right? So I can sculpt this with the inflate brush. So with the inflate brush, I'm sculpting all this in. And now you'll be wondering why we're we not sculpting the edges. Uh, I'm just going to be careful with my uh, brush intensity. So you might be asking why we're we not sculpting the edges. And the reason is because those are the edges guys we don't want to sculpt them we want to invert this and actually smooth these edges all the way out all right so we want to smooth these edges all the way in and then now that we have these edges smooth in i'll press b on my keyboard p which is for uh the different p keys and i'm going to use a pinch key so with a pinch, I will be able to just pinch across to get a much more uh, tight looking flame. So let's blow by simply holding down control and tapping. 
so i'm smoothing and i'm also pinching this through i'm also smoothing and pinching this inwards I'm smoothing and pinching this through So now we're done with this, it's uh, safe to actually bring this baby back up and then we will be able to position this, scale this all the way down and bring this directly here. Let's scale this inwards a little bit and position this here. I don't like the fact that it's pointing towards that part so I'm just going to rotate this and I think I'm going to do a little bit more work on the entire thing because uh, this looks to be a little bit too uh, much and this is beginning to look a little bit too small so I can just position this here alright so I can still choose to move this just a little bit so now we're seeing the huge picture the big picture it's making a lot of sense so I will also uh, take a peek at the references and see how I can make mo much more stylized look from this all right let's uh, also position this here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a selection here so I'm going to just simply select just this part and let's actually make a proper selection so I'll use this um, going to use this to make a selection here and I'm going to extract that part all right so if you come back to this that you had before which is this particular one so extract that part and hit accept to get it so if I come back to what I had before which is this one if I turn this off you'll notice I still have this so always clear this out don't forget to do that all right so now I have this the next thing which I would like to do by default you already know that we have dynamesh so i don't want to use dynamesh this time i would like to use sculptris pro all right so for me to actually get this working for me i may want to turn on sculptris pro but sculptris pro is not active when you're using the move object or the move tool so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and use maybe a clay build up by default and actually i think this is a good time to turn on symmetry to turn up the sculptures pro and so like i was saying the bigger the size the more crazier the mesh is going to be and the smaller the size the more resolution you're going to get right so i'm just turning this size just a little bit small so that i can walk around this all right so i can walk around this so that's why i'm showing you guys how you can do this thing so for the base i'm just going to go ahead and scale this just a little bit so for the base I'm just going to scale this just a little bit and you you probably know by now why I'm using this you probably know you already know why I'm doing this right because you know just like every candle there is always wax on the floor all right so there is always wax on the floor just like every candle so now the next thing which I will do is now I have uh, gotten these attention I will turn this down and start sculpting some details around this okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and sculpt some details around this I don't know why that's cutting through all right so I'm going to go ahead and sculpt some details around this and maybe just try and see if I can make this grow up a bit grow up all right so this is nice for us to actually have so it's going to make me explain something real good for you guys now anytime you're sculpting and you're noticing this happening it is because you have this stuff turned off so if you go over to auto masking you're going to notice we have back face mask so if it's turned off that's where you have that stuff but now that we have it turned on if I start working you see we're not having that problem anymore all right so now we've known how this works I'm going to go ahead and turn all of this down to what we have here and then let me just turn all this up 
all right so i'm just gonna say skip until next restart and do this all right so let's have a look we have this turned on and i'm just going to fire this all the way up until this point so all i'm trying to do is just build up some stuff so we use the sculptress pro to generate more meshes around and then i will you know go ahead and st start making some of these very funny organic shapes happening here you can still choose to use a certain set of brushes that exist here in zbrush to do this there's a snake cactus brush that you can use to actually create very interesting looking things right so we can use this actually let's use one of them so if i turn this off right if i turn symmetry off i can use it to actually make something that looks like this smooth it out just to get something looking interesting uh we haven't gotten any wax falling from there so it's not going to be very logical to do something like that i can turn this down and maybe just make something like this as well and let's actually tighten up these other parts so that it's going to look very clean all right so we have this going on for us looks good so far and i'm using the uh, cactus thingy to actually merge stuff together actually i should turn this off and let's go ahead and use the inflates just to simply grow the thing. So all these brushes still work irrespective of where they are at any given time. All right. So now you have this. You should be excited that you have one finished stuff. So I'm selecting all the bays right now because I want to make them super clean and flat. And I'm going to invert by holding down control to invert this. Right. And I'll use this to scale the base down so with this done i would just going to go ahead and smooth the, the back side just a little bit and so we have this let's go ahead and turn up all the stuff that we had before oh uh, let's turn up all these things and there you have it in as much as i am not so okay with this uh thingy right now but i think we can call it uh complete assistance all right so this is what we have and so within the period where we started talking about this stuff we have seen how we can you know start up a simple model go ahead and start playing with this model and from there we can convert this to whatever we want and from converting this to whatever we want we can actually jump through and start sculpting uh, this stuff. So you've learned how to use DynaMesh, you've learned how to do the Ziri Mesh, you've also probably learned how to use Sculptris Pro. All right. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we would go ahead and maybe fine tune this just a little bit. And once we're done, we would uh, Ziri Mesh this. Actually, we can just simply Ziri Mesh this while we're talking. So we're going to go ahead and Ziri Mesh this right now. So I'm going to make a simple copy. All right. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we would go ahead and fine tune this a little bit, you know, add some very uh, obvious creases, just very obvious creases, nothing too complicated. And once then maybe add a couple of details if there is a need for that. And we're just going to look at those things, maybe add a floor, add something or we could just simply leave it the way it is. I think we should leave it the way it is and create a UV and also create a map directly here and once we're done with that the next thing which we're going to do is talk about how we're going to go ahead and shade this export it and you know start creating those interesting shapes in uh, Maya or in blender depending on which app that I click first all right so I will see you guys in the next video so now you see we have this here very very nice stuff to work with all right so uh i'll see you guys in the next video and i would like to know what you guys think about this and if you like this video simply give it a like and don't forget to share with your friends guys and if you're new here it would be cool if you can just hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so you don't miss the next uh upload so the next video is coming up really really soon so keep an eye on the notification for it if it is not already on the internet at the point where you're listening to this and if it is you should quit listening to me right now and click on the next video and watch it